Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for our 888 VoIP Mediatric Webinar. My name is Danielle, and I'm the Marketing Manager over here at 888 VoIP. We're just going to give attendees another minute or so to call into the webinar, and then we'll begin. I'm going to hand that over about 201, 202 to Marco, who is representing Mediatrics. Also, just a heads up, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the question tab in your control panel. You can type in your question and we will answer all the questions at the end of the webinar. If we do not have enough time though, we will follow up with you either via email or a call. Mark will have his contact information at the end of the slide deck there today. And then we can talk to you more on a one-on-one -on -one basis about any questions we didn't get to. So like I said, we'll just give it about one more minute see if more people call in and then we will start. All right, it's been about two minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and begin the webinar. So I'm gonna hand it over to Marco. Thank you, Danielle. Good day, everyone. My name is Marco Raimo. I'm the channel manager here for Media5 uh, in North America. Uh, happy hump day to everyone. I appreciate uh, the time you take to join us on to this webinar. Um, we're getting close to the uh, long weekend and uh, Hopefully, uh, during your barbecue sessions, you can uh, think about uh, how uh, you can be more successful with the Mediatrix devices and grow your IP telephony business. Uh, as today, uh, what we want to do is uh, basically take you into the exciting uh, world of IP telephony with Mediatrix, uh, just to understand you know, who the company is and where we like to play and why we feel uh, you will grow your VoIP solutions in what markets you know, we feel we're strong. Uh, as opposed to maybe the other types of uh, solutions that are out there. Uh, so before I, I start my, uh, my deck, uh, I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank Triple Eight VoIP. Uh, they've been uh, an amazing partner for us in the past, uh, I think, year and a half we've been working with them. Um, uh, as a Media5 is a purely channel company, uh, they've been really instrumental in uh, helping us uh, execute our channel partner program. Partners have been telling us how uh, easy it is to work with them and they've really been able to simplify our uh, supply chain. So a big shout out to, to our team at Triple Eight VoIP. They really do get the, uh, the concept of a two-tier model channel strategy that we have in terms of fulfillment, even though we have direct relationships with all our solution providers and our partners that are going out there deploying solutions. Um, they're very, very good at uh, carrying our equipment, but at the same time, even supporting uh, our solution. So they're very knowledgeable, and I thank Danielle and her team for, uh, for that, and um, we hope to grow uh, the, uh, the community. We hope to grow the business uh, more in the next couple of years. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me get into the company itself and probably remove the elephant in the room as to understand is, well, why is... Why right, do Danielle and I talk about Mediatrix and I call you and I say I'm Marco from Mediatrix instead of saying Media5? And who is Media5? So let's get that out of the way. Um, the real company name really is Media5 Corporation. It's been there since the 90s. And Mediatrix is really one of two divisions. Mediatrix is the product line. But I've been working only on Mediatrix solutions for the last 15 years. And so that's why I, I'll call you and I'll tell you I'm Marco from Mediatrix. But in reality, the company name really is Media5. And uh, our, our mission 
really is to provide you with SIP solutions uh, that are uh, beyond your expectations uh, and to deliver the highest in terms of standards of quality, excellence and support, and of course make you as profitable as possible. Bring you back to the margins where you had back in the 90s, uh, and that's what I've been getting from some of our partners who uh, realize that, oh, you guys are uh, ex-Nortel technology. Your engineering is, is, is uh, top-notch. It's second to none. Uh, so when we deploy the Mediatrix uh, units, it's easy and we forget about it and we're making great margins on it and we're growing our business. Uh, but the other division that we see here is M5 team. So the other... And it's, you can call it a product division because, yes, they do make software products for other development, uh, other developers, I should say, um, other telecom equipment manufacturers. Um, so we have an award-winning uh, SIP client engine and software development kit that we um, provide to our uh, partners like Cisco, Avaya, Unify, Mitel, basically a large, uh, some of the major brands out there who are building their own IP. Uh, telephony platforms and uh, or even with the North American uh, chip manufacturers uh, being a North American based company here in, in Canada we work with Texas Instruments and Broadcom and Intel uh, to be able to provide the SIP stack onto their DSP chips and whatnot so that's M5 team I'm not involved with with them but those are the two divisions of Media 5 and who is Media 5 are they a ma large manufacturer are they, uh, we are literally a technology company. Um, although we're based in, in North America, we have offices around the world uh, and we have deployments around the world. The only thing is we are made up of, I would say 85% of our employee staff are telecom developers. So we're engineers. And notice I mentioned telecom developers, not any type of developer. There is a very special uh, expertise in SIP that exists in the cluster here between Montreal, Sherbrooke, and Ottawa, you know, where you have you know, head offices of you know, Nortel and Mitel and whatnot, who are able to uh, really um, innovate in telecom and have a proven uh, innovation in telecom, uh, especially uh, today with SIP uh, devices or SIP uh, uh, type of deployments. But in the past, we did MGCP, we did H323. So these guys, they, they're the University of Montreal, University of Sherbrooke, the University of Ottawa, they turn out a lot of these uh, propeller heads uh, who uh, make me, guys like me look good because I'm not very technically inclined, but uh, I love to represent this group of engineers who are excellent, uh, excellent R&D teams. So by all means, uh, we always ask our partners to, to challenge us with their, uh, their applications and their solutions. And because we're a 100% channel, uh, your success uh, very, we rely on your success. I mean, it's very important to us. We, we, our success basically relies on your success at 100%. Um, there is, we don't sell direct to the market at all. Uh, although we can support practically anyone with a SIP solution, uh, we only do uh, support our partners that have SLAs. And you'll learn a little bit about that later. And they, these guys uh, even hand off the end user to us if they want to. But at the end of the day, with the relationship of the end user stays with our solution partners and our channel partners. So again, just to coming back with the two divisions, we have our partners, whether they're reselling our devices or reselling or using our technology to build their own platforms. Some of them are doing both. Some of them are OEMing the devices. Some of them are are uh, just providing them to the to the market. Um, again, it's an indirect, it's a two-tier model, and it's going very well. Uh, but this is just a subset that we have some of the top top 30 carriers around the world uh, because of the relationships that we have with the other platforms uh, with M5T. Again, Media5, what we feel, uh, you know, what we want to really uh, point out today is that we have extensive knowledge in telecom, especially uh, when it comes to integrating with uh, existing legacy telecom equipment. So we've been around, you know, uh, for quite some time. We've been doing this uh, since nine, in the 90s, before that in audio. Uh, so we know how the PSDN has developed and it's not going anywhere, even though it's, you know, uh, people think it's going to disappear, but it's been 50 years that it's been perfected and IP telephony 
has uh, a long way to go to rival its uh, its quality. But what we do is we are able to IP enable any TDM with our access devices. All right. So what you see here are going to see exactly that. It's access devices. You're going to ask yourself, well, if you have this expertise, why aren't you making great IP phones? Why aren't you making IP PBXs? The answer is very simple. You saw it earlier. We are behind those telecom equipment manufacturers. We're not going to bite the hand that feeds us. And we're going to focus on these devices, on these multi-service business gateways, so that we can actually see we're number one at this. Instead of trying to make everything for everyone and try to be the answer to everyone and make IP PBX platforms or cloud platforms and whatnot. Um, so we're going to focus on uh, empowering the edge of your uh, of your SIP services, if you're a, uh, a carrier, and at the same time uh, giving you the the ability to make money and make margins uh, that you have done back in the days with these devices as well. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we want to again show off our uh, our expertise with our customer support. And the fact that uh, customer satisfaction is extremely uh, important to us, we really value that. So we do listen to your needs. Uh, you do have the uh, the ear here, which is myself. You, I, I am your your gateway, if you will, <laughs> to uh, R and D. When you can come to me and say, "Here's what I need to be successful in this market," you know, and we want to be challenged. We want to hear from you, and we we will uh, value your uh, your feedback and value. Uh, your needs. We're not going to pretend like we know what your market needs. What we're going to tell you is that whatever we make is going to work and it's going to work fine and it's going to be reliable because of the technology. So that's what we love about technology is we want to make it simple and we want to make it reliable and it's got to work. Um, what I'm showing here as well is that uh, we own our own, as you know, we own our own uh, I, uh, intellectual property uh, royalties. So we're pretty much a company that develops our own software, our own in-house software. And we've been one of the first uh, vendors that have deployed over, I think, a million ports back in uh, the early 2000s uh, worldwide. Uh, we've got uh, tax centers, technical assistance centers in Europe. Uh, I believe one in Germany, one in uh, Athens, in, uh, in Greece. And then here in North America at our headquarters and one in uh, in South America as well, Brazil and Argentina. So we've got um, professionals, we've got these, these engineers that can speak your language and that can speak your customer's language and support them in their language. I'm not sure if I mentioned uh, or if Danielle mentioned, we'll keep the questions uh, till the end and I'll try to finish up as quickly as possible so we can have an actual uh, conversation about your needs and your, applica your applications today. What I wanna do is just give you like an overview, just a very generic overview of some of the top uh, solutions that we like to play in and of course get your feedback on that. Uh, but just before we get into the solutions, uh, here's a snapshot of uh, our portfolio. And it seems like here we've got the Mediatrix portfolio seems like they've got, what, 12 or not even 10, 10 models. That's not the case. Uh, what we have here is 10 series, uh, which each of these series can go up to 100 different models. Uh, however, we started off back in the 90s as something very basic with the, uh, with the ATAs, being able to, you know, just IP enable TDM uh, with the, uh, the 4100 series. And now that's evolved into the S7 series, which you'll see. Uh, but PSTN gateways as well, you know, uh, you know that uh, we have the G7 series and C7 series are being used as PSTN gateways to work with uh, either IP PBXs or legacy PBXs. Uh, specialty gateways for longer loop deployments. Uh, so these are beefed up, uh, and we'll see them later. If time permits, we'll see what, why they are specialty gateways. But in the, uh, we just released, I think, a couple of years ago, or about a year and a half, 18 months ago, the first. Uh, Mediatrix SBC on, that sits on top of a gateway platform. And why we went in there is because of our partners who are doing IP trunking and hosted cloud solutions that really needed a gateway that they enjoyed deploying but had more functionality on it instead of, you know, uh, managing several devices to do one IP trunk solution. Um, the SBCs are vital to SIP trunking. Um, I'm 
I'm going to pretend that you guys don't know why this is the case, so I feel a little smarter, but at the same time, uh, just to uh, let you know that the SBCs are really the, 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 the Swiss Army knife that can replace everything you see here. But of course, the gateways themselves will also be, it will always have their place because it's at a different price point, right? So we've got two main series of SBCs that sit on a gateway, which we call it a multi-service gateway. So we've got two, and I'll get into those models a little later. But these guys are uh, our powerhouse edge devices that can really empower the edge of your IP network. So before I get into the actual solutions, uh, just want to sh give you the reasons why you're going to choose Mediatrix as a uh, gateway vendor partner and as a CPE vendor partner. Uh, and the main reason, and this is the feedback that we get from our partners, is the fact that it's simple. Uh, we take these devices that can do many, many things, uh, and, but they have to be quick and easy to deploy. And not just uh, plug and play for the deployment, but just even the, the day two services. If you're a carrier and you're, and you're managing from a cloud, you're managing IP phones and you're managing devices, well, this device needs to be as easy to set up and at the same time easy to manage on day two. Uh, and that's the case. You know, you can mass manage these. It can pre pretty much be managed by your current central management system uh, or even the one that we can give you, which is a cloud management system that you'll see a little later. Bottom line is we want to make it easy for you to deploy and forget about it. Um, why you forget about it is because it's very reliable. So uh, when I first started here, uh, we always had a three-year warranty uh, on our devices. But to be honest, uh, I can easily give you a 10-year warranty on this because we have deployments which are still going on for more than 10 years. Uh, more than, in fact, we celebrated our, our 26th anniversary this year. So um, unfortunately for me, I don't get enough opportunities to upgrade old devices because they're working fine. Um, but the um, the RMA rate, as you can see, is, is less than 0.5%. When I first started, it was like at 2%, and now it's becoming less and less. And uh, that just you know attests to the type of uh, technology and the type of engineering that goes into these uh, into these products. Uh, if you have customers again that that, that need something that um, well, most customers like hospitals, and and I'll show you later the vertical markets we work in, but where faxing is important, a fax over IP. Uh, working with POS machines, modem, uh, or just need really uh, voice quality that's going to rival the PSTN, you really do need to think about Mediatrix. Uh, if, if you don't need that kind of quality, then there are other uh, you know options out there, but we have the best quality in terms of voice and fax over IP. Um, again, it just works because of the interoperable SIP stack that we own and is the most interoperable SIP stack in the world. Um, and we're behind, again, the other platforms that you're going to deploy these, uh, these Mediatrix devices on. Um, aside from reliability and the fact that easy and simplicity uh, is really the, uh, the flexibility of these devices. So I did show you a little bit, you know, the, a little earlier the, 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 the snapshot of the series. And those, uh, each of those models can be, are very modular and, can, and pretty much can, can be uh, deployed uh, in anything you can dream up because of our production here and our engineering, its design is so flexible that um, we can go anywhere from one line to 28 lines on one device uh, in a modular fashion. One series can actually be completely field upgradable where you can put in cards yourself. We can go from one T1 to eight T1 on one device. And on top of that, we can add applications like SBC, router and whatnot uh, and completely scale you know, easily. Again, just because it's, uh, it's powerful and flexible, it still needs to be simple for you to deploy so that you can continue with your SLAs and you can profit uh, from being able to not spend a lot of time and energy on deploying these devices. Um, some of our uh, models also carry a virtual machine. Again, adding to this flexibility and the power that you can actually eliminate some CapEx uh, by running any third-party software that you want. So I have some partners that are saving a lot of money on, uh, I guess, Dell servers or Cisco servers uh, who are running their software PBXs on my device because they need the gateway to connect to the PSTN, and I'll show you uh, that a little later. Uh, they're saving tons of money, and they're able to just render their, their, their solutions as, as feasible as possible and make them as competitive as possible. Um, 
and I'm not sure if you'll find um, this other feature from another vendor, but it's extremely customizable. So although we have many models for you to choose from and many uh, densities for you to choose from, if you dream up of a density that we don't have and you say, I'd like to have whatever, 6FXO and 3, 3FXS on one device or whatnot, uh, we can make that for you quite, you know, without a, a big uh, order or whatnot. You know what I mean? We, we can do it. It's customizable. And we can ha white label it for you if that's what you want. If you have a partner, if you have a, a, a niche market you want and you want to put your name on it, you want to put your mom's name on it, we can do that. So not too many vendors are going to do that for you. So we believe that that's a good advantage for Mediatrix. Uh, and, of course, we don't like to say that we uh, play on price, but for sure pricing is our strength. Uh, we've been told that with the level of functionality that we have on our device, the fact that, you know, we don't need to sell you any upgrades and sell you any license uh, upgrades to do one use case compared to another use case. You get everything on one license and the fact that the capacity is pretty high uh, at the price points that we have, we're pretty much one of the best priced uh, products on the market. Uh, so that just leads to best value for the market, but for you, hopefully, it uh, provides you with uh, the greatest ROI, and it continues to bring your, your total cost of ownership uh, down if you're a cloud provider. Um, and at the same time, um, our partners like Triple Eight VoIP, uh, and our, uh, can, they, can, they can help you with uh, the pricing uh, for even for uh, device as a service. And that you know the market is starting to move that way, and we're we're definitely open uh, to doing that as well. Uh, again, we're very flexible as a company, and we want to understand uh, what it's going to take to help you succeed. And last but not least, based on the information I gave you before on our tax centers around the world, uh, we like to to toot our own horn. The fact that we're, our SIP expertise is second to none. So not only can we support our own products, but we can support the other people's uh, devices. And we can just help you troubleshoot your application and identify the root cause quickly, uh, which will save you time and money. Uh, and uh, it will do it again in, in several languages. At least here in North America, I think we do it in three languages. You know? uh, so with our best industry SLA packages, uh, we uh, were able to provide you priority response time. Uh, and provide you and your partners the, uh, the the quality support that they deserve. Okay, right before we get into the solutions, here's where we see a lot of our devices, especially the Mediatrix devices. We see the, uh, the, the different types of vertical markets that are very popular, uh, especially uh, if you're dealing with uh, existing infrastructure. Um, the healthcare and hospitality have uh, are, are are the buildings, you know, the 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 MDUs and the MTUs out there. Uh, I think we're doing something like one hotel per month or something with our partners. Uh, and the hospitals really need uh, to be able to do paging over IP with some rooms, and, and they don't want to rewire uh, existing patient rooms and whatnot. So uh, again, these devices are integration tools. And they're able to uh, IP enable uh, these type of uh, vertical markets, these type of uh, network topologies. At the end of the day, for us, uh, whether you're doing a university in higher education, whether you're, uh, whether you're doing a bank or a, 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 um, an insurance company with multi branches, for us, it's a network topology that's always the same. And we always look at that topology and we always tell you what the solution will be. Uh, but we noticed that our partners are having great success in these uh, vertical markets and for these reasons. Um, obviously, SMB is, is, is very vague, but when I talk about SMB, I mean a company that's got multiple branches. Uh, obviously, VoIP is a big um, ROI for these type of co co companies, but especially in the retail chain uh, where you'll find a lot of legacy and where communications cost is really just an operational cost. Uh, and they don't want to forklift. Uh, we see a lot of uh, a lot of success there. Uh, most of the chains out there and the restaurants uh, have our devices in there. And if you go to Borders bookstores or if you go to Office Depot and whatnot, you'll find our devices there as well. And they're taking advantage of of, of SIP. They're taking advantage of IP trunks or, or VoIP solutions uh, from their uh, from you guys, from the solution providers and the, and the service providers. And last but not least, the public sector seems to be 
uh, a very good uh, market for our, our devices. Um, we even go as far as supporting these guys directly uh, because our partners uh, are happy uh, for them to contact us for support. So they actually may resell our SLA packages to these uh, municipalities and governments. Uh, so we work with the UN, U.S. Senate, but the U.S. Senate doesn't get the devices from us. They don't. They get it from our channel. And they'll get support directly from us because they sold them the support. But they can also get support from our certified partners as well. Um, but they seem to very uh, much enjoy, obviously, the, the durability and the quality of, of, these, uh, of these devices. And uh, they, they see the, um, the fact that they are very much integration tools, building blocks, and be able to do like a gradual migration to SIP. Uh, it's very popular in the, uh, in the public sector. All right, so we'll move into what I consider to be the most popular solutions here, at least in North America, and use cases for our devices. Um, so again, I've provided maybe four or five slides here, but each one of these can be expanded into like 10 slides. Uh, but for today's purposes, we're gonna just keep it very high level, uh, but uh, go ahead and, and send your questions to, um, to Danielle or type them in to us so we can uh, answer them afterwards. Uh, and of course, if it's uh, above my head in terms of technical question, I'll be able to answer these offline with you uh, when we speak with my engineers, with, uh, with my SEs, and they'll be able to answer those questions that are a little bit more technical. Um, but the first one that I want to show you, which is obviously a very popular uh, solution, is uh, the, the SIP trunking. Right? So whether you're an uh, ITSP or whether you're a reseller of uh, SIP trunks, We've noticed that um, deploying SIP trunking easily, uh, quickly is a challenge if you don't have an SBC. Uh, as I mentioned, the SBC is vital to be able to secure uh, these IP trunks. And not only that, the SBC is really removing a lot of capex uh, for the IP trunk uh, provider in being able to certify their SIP trunks with the IP PBX vendors uh, brand. Uh, people believe that you need to ha have this certification done and, and go through this energy, and the answer is simply not true. The SPC is there to provide uh, that translator. Uh, he really is a super cop. Uh, he's like the border controller at the border of the, uh, of the, of the country that lets in the right uh, people, lets in the right packets, lets in the right uh, users, and at the same time speaks all the language, speaks over 100 languages. Uh, so again, probably doesn't exist in today's uh, border security, but it does exist in telephony. Um, he is able to uh, mediate the SIP uh, with any kind of PBX. As long as the PBX is speaking SIP and as long as the, the trunks are SIP, he's going to be able to solve it. At least that's what we did. And what we needed to do with Mediatrix is we, had, we needed to reinvent the way SBCs are deployed uh, because it makes it a very powerful tool. Uh, it could be quite complex. And again, our mantra is simplicity. Uh, when we got into this business, we said that the SBC needs to be deployed just like an, any regular gateway. Uh, it has to be as easy as that. It has to be as easy as an IP phone. It has to be close to plug and play as possible. And that's exactly what we did. We reinvented the notion of deploying and configuring an SBC device. And you can see this uh, if you take advantage of uh, the um, the offer that we're giving today uh, for the attendees on this on this webinar uh, to get a demo device. Uh, I would strongly suggest you look at this Swiss Army knife because he is able to take care of all the use cases uh, that I'm showing here. Um, aside from securing and mediating the SIP, he also understands who can call from where. Uh, at this company site. So he has advanced routing and advanced failover. Uh, some, you'll, you'll notice that some customers out there that want IP trunks actually have IP trunks coming from one service provider and then a, a secondary service provider as backup, uh, depending on the sophistication of your, uh, of your end user, of your enterprise. And again, it's the Sentinel that's going to decide where he's going to fall back on and who's got control of what. Uh, is it going to be a geo-redundant solution with the SIP trunk? Is it going to fall back to the uh, PSTN? It can do it all, right? Uh, at the same time, 
um, like myself who's a remote user, my PBX uh, has a hard time giving me a re as a remote user all the bells and whistles that I want as if I am on the same site as my coworkers at the head office. Uh, so the Sentinel takes care of that in a secure fashion. No need to put in expensive VPNs as a remote worker or even as a, as a, as a road warrior if you're traveling and you're traveling from you know, hotel to hotel and you're, you're calling from Wi-Fi with your SIP clients, with your mobile clients. Uh, you want to have the same, you want to you wanna behave like as if you're in the office where that PBX is located. And the Sentinel allows that without having to do complex and expensive VPN tunneling. So that's a, uh, a use case that is very popular. Uh, and again, I can take this slide and separate it into maybe eight different more use cases and I can show you each one how it works. And I'll be happy to do this if ever you want to learn more about why it's important to use an SBC with IP trunking um, and, and which use cases might really uh, be the right one for you and your, and your, and your current part, uh, I should say your current customer. The other one is unified communications uh, for headquarters and branch offices. Well, we really, this really is you know, a cloud solution, but from a private cloud. Uh, and uh, what we have is the PBX at the headquarters here in New York is hosting the phones, the IP phones in different sites. And they could be uh, you know, in different, in just in different addresses in the same state, or they can be in different countries. It doesn't really matter to us. Uh, what's important again is that again we need to protect the assets in the uh, headquarters. That uh, we need to protect the IPPBX from getting hacked because we've seen that. And I've had I've had end customers contact us for the SBC, so they seem to know that they need it. Uh, so what I do is I need to send them to a partner that understands uh, what that is, so that they can provide them the SBC. And at the branch offices. Uh, what you have is you may you may just have uh, uh, phones, you know, IP phones. A lot of times, uh, in order to be able to win your customer's business, um, the customer is not able to put an IP PBX in every single location, and you might lose. It may not be very feasible to do this. Uh, so you can still sell them the IP PBX solution at their headquarters and provide a Mediatrix uh, SBC device at the other side, so that in case they lose their WAN. If something goes on, wrong at those sites, they lose connection to the headquarters, while the SBC becomes your secure controller at that site. The SBC will keep all the IP phones running. At least we can, we pretty much uh, claim that 2,500 IP phones or 2,500 IP users can be supported by our SBC uh, with the largest version of our SBC, which is still going to be at a fraction of a price of the other enterprise SBCs that you find out there. Uh, and I'll show you that a little later. Um, but what they can do is these phones can go out there and call out to the PSTN or continue to just call each other internally because he becomes the switch there. The, finally, when he sees connection back to the headquarters or back to the PBX in New York, well, then he'll just give control back to that uh, PBX. And so the people there, uh, and these sites uh, continue to call each other, continue to communicate, even though they might not be able to send out uh, emails and whatnot because their uh, their WAN is down, right? Um, and because they're doing this over a public IP, again, it's important that you have an SBC to secure those lines. Uh, of course, you could also use gateways uh, to IP enable uh, TDM equipment. And really, uh, IP enabled that TDM equipment to work with the IP PBX, which is a very, very popular um, application uh, since uh, since the early 90s. We've been doing this, and uh, people have been remotely connecting their branch offices over to a uh, a central PBX with our gateways forever, and they they support encryption, so we could even encrypt the uh, the signaling and the media, so that you know we can make the the calls private as well. A lot of partners use uh, the the gateways just so that they can have the uh, IP phones just call out to the PSDN and not have to always we are reroute you know in different cities and in different countries back to the headquarters for every single call to the P local PSDN that they want to make. Uh, so that's neat, you know, in the sense that they just 
uh, know that uh, the IP phones, we program the, uh, or you configure the media tricks, uh, let's say the C7 device, uh, to be able to have the IP phones call out through him whenever they want to reach out to the PSDN. And that's also very important for what's called 911 breakout, you know, but some people call it PSDN breakouts or whatnot. The Sentinel device can also provide fallback to LTE. So if in case your definition of survivability on these IP lines is uh, not really PSTN related, uh, you want to fall back to the cellular, you want to fall back to like 4G and whatnot, the Sentinel device can do that. Uh, we put in the LG, uh, sorry, the LTE um, dongle in the back and therefore all the lines will be able to use that as the survivable line or the failover line, if you will. Now we have the cloud-based uh, unified communications. It's pretty much the same slide. It's so that instead of being a private uh, cloud, uh, it, 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 it's going to be a public cloud. It's going to be a, uh, a pure hosted PBX solution. So this is another uh, deployment that we're very popular in. Uh, and again, using the same uh, devices, uh, the SBC providing a lot of survivability, different flavors of survivability that I just mentioned. Um, but at the same time, uh, the gateways themselves are also able to provide uh, survivability too. I believe for up to something like 75 IP users, some of the low-end gateways uh, can provide, uh, can manage and provide uh, 75 IP phones or IP users at that site um, with survivability. At the same time, uh, if security is going to be a concern, you, we got you covered with the Sentinel. And uh, what's more important is the fact that we're able to work with whatever the customer has at his site. Um, if you're a cloud provider, you just want to be able to deploy your service as, as quickly and as cleanly as possible. And Mediatrix will allow you to be able to work with that customer and win that customer's business without doing a forklift solution, without telling them to have to replace everything. So there are some markets out there that don't want to replace and they like their phones. Um, especially the senior market, you know, we're very popular in this, in, again, the multi-dwelling units that have senior homes in there and, this, and a lot of our partners are displacing the incumbent because they go in there and they work with what the customer has and they just put our devices in the building. And I would say in the, in the basement of the building or in the closet of the building and just connect it directly to the copper of the building. Okay, and moving on to the Relatively simple deployment of using our gateways as literally as a PSTN gateway for PBXs. Not all the IP PBX vendors out there have uh, can have direct connectivity to the PSTN or have the uh, analog or PRI connectivity. So definitely uh, the Mediatrix G7 series is the most popular C7 series for analog as well. Uh, we are able to provide, especially for the software based uh, PBX is out there like 3CX uh, and uh, Microsoft, of course. Um, these guys, they use our gateways to be able to connect out to the PSTN at all times. Um, even in locations where there's no PBX, as I mentioned earlier, if we remove the PBX here and you have IP phones in another, in, your, in, in, in a branch site, and again, those, you want those IP phones to connect to the PSTN, you're going to use the Mediatrix G7 and C7 series for that. Uh, if you're in Europe, you're probably going to use the 4400 series for the BRI lines. Um, but what's important, again, is that you're able to, to do this quickly and easily. Um, I can go as far as telling you that uh, if space is an issue, then with the Sentinel 400 gateway, which is the most modular gateway that carries the virtual machine, you can incorporate APBX in there if you want. Uh, you can run a third-party software in there. So you, this picture here would really have just one box. That's all. It's an all-in-one solution, one box. And I see more and more uh, partners doing that uh, where they have to. Here we're showing our uh, partnership and our in, uh, basically our uh, the fact that we can help Skype and help Microsoft uh, integrate themselves into the customer's uh, infrastructure, existing infrastructure. Uh, whether the customer has, you know, a, a, a legacy PBX or an IP PBX, 
um, they want to take advantage. The, 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 the same customer has Office 365 and they want to use the Skype functionality. So they want the features, they want the bells and whistles with their existing solutions. And here again, it's the Sentinel SBC that's going to be enable this. Uh, they're going to be able to interrupt between two IP systems. A lot of times in bigger companies, you have two different IP systems that are not the same brand and they need to talk to each other. Again, it's the super cop that's going to do it. He's going to be able to translate everything for them. Uh, to be able to connect Office 365 in the cloud. Again, it's going to be him who's going to secure that. A lot of times they do it to IP trunking, but it's going to be the, the Sentinel that's going to decide where to route the calls how to route the calls and who gets access to these things, right? So he's got the call control in there and he knows uh, who's got uh, permissions to have, you know, he knows here with uh, the pool of users, you know, wherever they are, uh, as long as they have IP access, he'll be able to give them uh, the secure uh, control to the Microsoft Office uh, cloud or work with the PBX if that's what they need. So again, easy connection to either SIP or conventional uh, clouds, if that's what uh, your situation. So we can slice this, uh, or slice this, I should say, there's diff many, many ways to, to skin the cat. And this is just an illustration that shows you all the different possibilities that you can work with. Uh, at the end of the day, the MediaTrix device is an integration tool. It's like a little Lego block that you can use as you see fit uh, that can be pretty much achieve your, your customer's needs. All right, and moving on to one of the uh, last slides on the uh, the popular deployment scenarios. Uh, we call this the TDM network transformation, but it's just a, a fancy way of saying, look, working with legacy equipment, uh, being able to do a gradual SIP migration for your customers, customers that are not ready to do forklifts. We've been doing this since day one. Uh, we, uh, whether it's in your core, or whether it's on site, on your customer site, you use our devices as integration tools to IP enable legacy equipment. It could be legacy phones, it could be, le it could be even uh, TDM switches that need to be phased out. It's a gradual SIP uh, migration, and that's one of our, 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 top, uh, our top strengths, you know, is that it's going to work with whatever legacy is out there. So for those deployments, we're looking at the G7 and we're looking at the C7. Primarily, those are the modular devices at the price points that make sense for your for your market. And last but not least, yes, another deployment that I want to make you aware of. Uh, in a couple of months, we will be releasing our cloud EMS. Uh, it's an element management system that will basically allow our, our partners, our service provider partners and integrators to manage all of their MediaTrix deployments and configurations using a secured cloud-based portal, hassle-free. Uh, it's nice to have products that work well, and, uh, but you still may need to want to upgrade firmwares after many years or uh, you want to be able to just get to them and, and monitor them. Um, so we're giving you a tool that you can use. Uh, it will offer you uh, full control on the software licenses. Exa example, if you're using uh, the SBCs, if you're deploying SBCs out there to, to, to be able to deploy licenses quickly and cleanly, um, SLA activations, and of course, zero touch provisioning. You know, zero touch provisioning is known as plug and play, but it's done with regular inventory. You know, uh, with our redirect server, you just go and get our devices anywhere. The device right away will be able to be detected by the cloud tool, this cloud tool, and pretty much um, allowing you to decouple that deployment from from procurement, if you will. Um, so, for the more sophisticated uh, cloud services, if you're a service provider uh, and you have many users, uh, by the end of the year, you know, with its extensive set of uh, of APIs. Uh, the Media 5 Cloud uh, management system will guarantee easy and smooth integration to your platform. Uh, so therefore, you can benefit from the full power of provisioning at that point. If you have questions on to how you obtain these, uh, access to the Cloud EMS, uh, we're thinking of providing, first and foremost, we're providing it at no cost to our SLA partners. 
uh, our SLA partners are already uh, partners that are uh, receiving support directly from us, and therefore uh, we can provide at least the, the functionality of managing the units that they have deployed, managing their inventory uh, of devices uh, as part of their SLA. Okay. And most partners that are, you know, strategic partners that are doing more than 50k in revenue with AAA VoIP, for example, will probably have uh, will probably have an SLA as well. All right. So those were the solutions. That's that's basically the the, the, the gist of the high level type of uh, visual solutions we like to play in. And now what I want to do is I want to really uh, get into the uh, the portfolio. Um, so I'm not sure how much time we have, but I'll start with the most important and the most sophisticated, and it's the SBC. As I mentioned, I can do uh, a webinar only on this uh, platform, uh, but at the end, we have a, a, an SBC device that we're very proud of because it's easy to deploy, and it takes care of all of these use cases, uh, which in the end, the end of the day are the benefits to the market that you can sell an SBC based on just one of these use cases. Uh, for example, we talked about survivability. We all know what that's about. In case there's a WAN failure, it'll be the secure controller and take care of all of the routing and internal calls. Uh, and of course, external calls to the PSTN. Uh, and then give control back to the primary network if they're, when the WAN is back up. Uh, SIP normalization. It's all about uh, normalizing uh, major vendor SIP signaling protocols being the mediation uh, point. And, and, and at the same time, it works hand in hand as a, as a demarcation device because it'll secure uh, the, um, the networks between the operator who's providing the SIP trunk and the customer's uh, uh, IP network, right? Uh, it creates a clear separation between enterprise and operator networks. And it basically hides the topologies and credentials. So they're able to uh, secure everything, uh, not get hacked, uh, not get the, especially when there's an IPPBX, you don't want it to get hacked uh, and incur costs. And at the same time, uh, that same license, that same SBC license can do what's called QoS monitoring, housekeeping, where the Sentinel is going to monitor the quality of service and provide uh, some enhanced remote troubleshooting tools. Uh, when, once you have all the SIP traffic being managed and going through all of the SBC, the Mediatrix Sentinel, then you can easily pinpoint and e you know and easily troubleshoot any problems that your customer believes you may have. In less than 10 minutes, you can tell the customer what the problem is, if it's on his network or if it's something on your network. Uh, this is the feedback I got from uh, my carrier partners that are doing IP trunking with this device as a, a, a standardizing with the Mediatrix Sentinel, is that we're saving them time and money on support and of course, we save them a lot on the capex for certification and whatnot. Um, we've got far end NAT traversal remote sites. What is that? Well, I mentioned it a little earlier. I showed you how um, Sentinel is going to solve the far end NAT traverse problems uh, and supports uh, call forking. Uh, basically, it's providing the same communication uh, features or the communication services to the branch offices or to the remote workers as if they were at the same site. Um, again, no expensive VPN tunneling for that. Uh, signaling and media encryption, like all of our gateways, because the SBC is sitting on top of our gateway firmware, it's going to be able to encrypt not only the signaling, but the media as well. So that's important for some uh, hospital deployments. If you're in the healthcare, uh, you know, so you have uh, practitioners that are doing remote, uh, I should say remote, uh, what's it called? Uh, remote services to their patients, and sometimes they need the video and the voice to be encrypted. Well, the Sentinel is, uh, is good for that. And um, PSTN and legacy PBX system, again, coming back to the gateways, because it's on a gateway platform. Again, you're using uh, the gateway, and you don't need to use it as a gateway. It's just there if you want to use it. Um, you don't have to pay for the telephony cards, because the Sentinel can incorporate telephony cards out there in the field later on if you need that. Uh, and last but not least, the fact that we're saving a lot of uh, our partners uh, a bundle on, again, uh, equipment on space and equipment costs 
for running uh, a third-party application. Uh, we've seen this in the healthcare. Some people are running nurse call systems on this uh, carrier-grade device instead of uh, expensive Cisco servers, let's say, uh, or they're running IPPBX in there, uh, and they're saving a bundle on, on that uh, because they need the gateway. You know, the gateway has to be there no matter what, uh, so you might as well incorporate the uh, PBX as well. And so you can take 3CX, for example, your license, and, and run it on the virtual machine. And this virtual machine is very flexible. I mean, it's, 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 it's not an expensive virtual machine because if you only need 30 gigabytes of, of SSD, then you're only gonna get 30 gigabytes of SSD, and you're only gonna pay for 30 gigabytes of SSD. But if you need 256 gigabytes of SSD to run your application, then we have that tool. So let's take a look at the different uh, models of the Sentinel, and there are two. The largest one is the Sentinel 400. This is the one that I mentioned that you should take advantage of if you're going to uh, take advantage of this demo offer that we're doing today. Uh, again, it's, it, it, I call it my Swiss Army knife because it, ha it can do everything our products can do and, uh, and you can pretty much um, upgrade it as you go. Uh, it's the only platform that Mediatrix made that is completely field upgradable. So as you can see, you've got card slots in here that you can put in there as you wish. And there's about seven, uh, one, two, three, four, eight card slots, I believe. So you can go from one to eight PRI on one device, or each uh, card slot is four analog lines. So you can go from four to 28 analog lines, be it FXS or FXO. You know, and you can mix and match, you know, E1, T1s up to 240 channels. At the same time, the SBC, it still uh, will be able to be uh, loaded onto this and you can turn it on one license at a time, but you can go up to 600 SIP sessions, which for us is 600 licenses. And that's good for a good 2000 users, you know? So it's, even though it's, <laughs> it's not seen as the large enterprise, it, 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 you'll always find it at a fraction of the price of an Avaya SBC or a Cisco SBC. It's just as powerful and as flexible. Um, and again, we're going to always position it as a CPE device, but I do have some ITSPs using it in their core as their core SBC. I have a couple here in, in North America that have uh, realized that uh, it's a good solution and a much more cost-effective solution for them to then to buy those expensive uh, and again more complex SBC uh, vendors out there that do more stuff. Well, what we want to do is we want to take care of the hosted solutions and we want to take care of the IP trunking solutions and make it easy for you to do that. So I urge you to take a look at what we have done in terms of reinventing the way SBCs are configured. Uh, the, we really took away a, a, a step into being able to quickly and easily to create templates for you guys and reuse these templates over and over with a very nice GUI system as opposed to some other vendors that have just command line. Uh, his little brother, the Sentinel 100, again, because of different market needs, different price points, uh, we don't need a device that goes up to 600 SIP sessions. We can just need a device that can go max 120 SIP sessions at different price points. But again, uh, it can be a, a pure SBC, just a simple, uh, that we see here we have a, a picture of uh, two uh, models. One of them has no telephony card, the one on top. Uh, so he's just being deployed as a pure SBC and, uh, and nothing else. There's no gateway possibility. But the other one under it has the gateway in there as well. And I think we're showing something like four, one, two, three, four PRIs there. But we can do FXS, FXO, whatever it is you need. Uh, again, on the Sentinel 100, that can go up to 120 sessions, which is probably good for up to 500 registered users. IP phones and again managing the SIP traffic through him will reduce uh, a lot of operational costs for you uh, you can continue to to sell uh, SLAs quality SLAs and profit by that using this device as your weapon I failed to mention earlier that the Sentinel series actually also the chassis contains five uh, gigabit ports on it as well, uh, so it's got some you know internal routing, some, some switching and, and routing capabilities. But you can plug in other devices in there to manage 
uh, the devices, uh, one, one, and five, and I believe four LAN. Uh, the Sentinel also carries that USB port, which the other gateway platforms don't. Uh, again, that's the probably the USB port that you can use for uh, your own backup purposes, but at the same time, you can use to put in a LTE dongle for you to use as your your LTE lines or your LTE failover. All right, so we're moving away from the SBC series, those two uh, main models, the 100 to 400, into the Mediatrix G7 series, which is pure, a pure media gateway, uh, but the most modular uh, media gateway out there. Um, one thing I, I, I forgot to mention about, sorry, the Sentinel 100 is that it doesn't carry the virtual machine like his bigger brother, the 400. And this guy here, the G7 as well, there's no virtual machine. The only guy that has the virtual machine is the Sentinel 400 platform. Uh, what he has are uh, telephony ports, that like 1 to 4, uh, E1, T1, or 4 to 24, FXS, FXO, and of course, mix and match at the same time. Um, you notice that the chassis are very similar to the Sentinel-100. They do share the same uh, modular chassis, but although we can make them very modular, uh, the, it's, it's made at the factory here uh, in our production. It comes out of it. Uh, so if you want a certain configuration, you can get it, but it needs to come here at the factory. It is not field upgradable like the Sentinel-400 that you saw before. Um, sticking with uh, the gateways, now we have a pure ATA and our largest ATA, the S7 series, uh, that can go up to 20. That is a 24 port uh, or a 16 port device. And this is the, the most popular device when it comes to the MTU deployments that I mentioned earlier before. Uh, nicely rack mountable and it's, got, it's more performant than the older uh, 4124s that you were used to seeing in the past. Uh, and of course, uh, priced at the right price to be able to, to win you the, the VoIP business for those type of deployments. His uh, more beefed up brother, I should say, the LP series of uh, the LP version. It's uh, a specialty gateway for our partners that are doing uh, probably outdoor deployments uh, that need lightning protection, but also need longer loop. Uh, so we do have, you know, some some partners. They're working with some very large uh, campuses, university campuses, and uh, or even uh, hospital campuses, where the phone itself is like 10,000 feet away from the gateway, and we need to be able to light up the lamp and light up everything else that goes on uh, with that uh, device. So it's, it's it's been popular uh, to in, in those ty types of large uh, deployments and long loop deployments. But again, it's part of the S7 family. And what you see here are actual 24 RJ11 ports. If you like the Amphenol connector that you had back in the other devices, we do have an adapter for that. So our partners that are big thing in the buildings uh, and want an Amphenol uh, connection, yes, it'll come with the adapter so that you can continue to, to mix your, uh, your deployments in, in the existing buildings. So now we're going into the more smaller form factor, and that's the eight line device. And it's pure ATA, and this ATA can do FXS and FXO, either four FXS, four FXO, or eight FXS and eight FXO, or four of each. Um, but again, if you have the market or the need for, I don't know, uh, six FXS and two FXO, it can do it in the sense where we can make it relatively quickly for you. So we have that flexibility. Up until now, uh, the demand that we've seen is four and four and up to eight. And of course, the price points are very, very, very good. Price point per ratio, there's nothing out there that, that beats this, the C7 series. The 4102, seen as our uh, two-port device, uh, very, very popular for faxing over IP. A lot of people are deploying in these in residential uh, deployments as well, but we don't uh, we don't position our products as residential or consumer based uh, type devices. But we do have partners that are uh, deploying this in in that because it's a high volume device and it's great.
for uh, for cloud telephony. Uh, and it's you know it it really has two two ports you can work from two Ethernet ports as well. Uh, you can you can enable one port and disable the other one. Um, so it's it's working really well for fax over IP and for telephony. And last, I think, uh, but not least, is the product chart that I would like you guys to have access to. I would like you to take this and, and print it out uh, so that you can, it's a quick reference to really take a look at how the series change. Um, our partners, our, our reseller partners really like it. Um, but here we can just have a quick reference to understand, okay, okay, which series has the SBC, which series is the gateways, which series is, uh, has the virtual machine. You have it all here at a snapshot. But of course, you have a direct line to me and we can always talk about uh, your particular applications as well. And that's about it. I uh, hope I did not take the whole hour. <laughs> um, I'd like to have some time to, to answer questions. Danielle, I'm not sure if you have any for me. Right, yes, I'm here. Uh, we, uh, we, it, is, it is three o'clock already. Uh, and as of right now, we've had two questions sitting in the queue that maybe you can go over briefly. And we also had one other question, Marco, if we can get, if you can get a copy of the slide deck or can we get a copy to distribute? Yes, the slide deck, I'll be happy to, to send that out. Perfect. Thank you. Whoever Wonderful. Wants. Thank you. So, <laughs> perfect. Let's go through these two quick questions here really quickly. And after we do these two, since it is after three, any more that come in, I will send and forward over to Marco and he will answer them individually via email or he will give you a call and you can um, choose some way to, to discuss that question. So here's a question that has been sitting in here for a little bit. I'm not sure if you've answered it already. So is this device on the LAN or WAN? Looking at the deployment scenario on slide nine, it's mentioned that's internal, but the ITS for us mostly is out on the internet, not internal. The PBX is internal. And they reference slide okay. nine, the deployment scenario. The deployment scenario here is slide nine. Let's take a look at that. Yes. Slide nine should be this one, yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's make this a little larger so we can see it. Okay, and so again, here we're, we're looking at a scenario where it can be presented in many different ways. Um, and the Sentinel is deployed, it can either be behind the LAN or in front of the LAN. It doesn't really matter because it's got the built-in router. Uh, but the question again was what, uh, whether this was, in the, I didn't understand the external. It says, looking at the deployment scenario in slide nine, you have it internal, but the ITSP for us mostly is out on the internet, not internal, but the PBX is internal. Okay, that's right. And that's what we have as well. You can definitely deploy, uh, you can go over the public cloud and deploy this directly onto the, onto the public cloud as well. Uh, but it's always gonna be at the customer site. So it's always gonna be where the PBX is. The Sentinel, is usually deployed uh, next to the PBX or in the same line as, as a location as, as the PBX. But again, it can be behind the line. If the IT administrator absolutely doesn't want you to, you know, put a device, uh, uh, you know, before his 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 line, that's that's uh, that's fine. It'll work with uh, the the current uh, configuration of his line. But it can also be the the secure controller that ex that is directly connected to the public internet as well. I hope that answered uh, the question. Okay. And we have Why one other I, question, I, Marco. Sure. <laughs> what about spare and hot swap, and can you have two SBCs? So you want to be able to do load balancing with two SBCs? Yes, of course, uh, because of the capacities, they are what they are. Uh, we have partners that are doing load balancing with the SBCs and having them work together. And of course, providing the rule sets of who does, who manages what. And then you said, what about hotspots? You mean Wi-Fi hotspots? Yeah. Hot, about swap, the, the hot swap. Spot? Oh, hot swap. Oh, okay. Swap. Uh, hot swappable. Um, boom, 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 boom. Hot, it depends on the definition of hot swappable. Do we have high availability, like those core SBCs that you find in the, in the networks? No. Uh, that's on the roadmap. Uh, but we do have uh, the ability to fall back 
onto uh, you know to 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 basically if one sentinel goes down the other one takes over, uh, but they need to be working already in conjunction. I mean they have to be like like, like I mentioned before balancing each other and then one guy taking control of, you know so I do have a service provider today that's doing it but without the uh, high availability that if the unit goes down or whatnot the other one uh, in a master slave scenario it doesn't exist but in a uh, in a uh, conjunction scenario where they're both taking care of several uh, load balances it, it does exist anything right. else and it, does, it doesn't look like we have any other questions that came in, Marco. So we are going to go ahead and end the webinar. Again, thank you everyone so much for joining us today. And if you have any more questions about pediatrics, Marco did have this contact information on the last slide. I also will be uploading this presentation to the 888 VoIP on demand webinar section of our website. And we will also be sending you a copy of the slide deck as well as a link link to that presentation. So if you'd like to rewatch the webinar again, to kind of go back and revisit any of the topics that were discussed today. So on that note, we're going to end the webinar. And again, thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate the time. Have a good day and a good long weekend. Talk to you soon.